Flo, what do you want to know? Hi, I'm Flo from Sister to Sister, and my hard question is, if both the Jews and the Muslims are seed of Abraham, and they both had a blessing spoken over them by God, what's the problem? Well, no, that's, that's a hard question. Abraham had two sons, or multiple sons, but we have sons. We have Isaac, and we have Ishmael. Mm -hmm. Both of those men were blessed by God. Mm -hmm. Both have a covenant with God. So why are we in a situation where for thousands of years they've been at odds with each other? Who wants to start on that? Well, I'll, I'll jump in the shark tank. Yeah. <clears throat> the um, covenant that Isaac had was the covenant of Abraham, the one that God gave to Abraham, and it was passed on down. The covenant with Ishmael was a covenant that began with Ishmael, but was to extend to his family line. And God defined the entire uh, genus as, as saying that they would be w at war with themselves and with everyone else. Pastor. Well, you know, I would, I would go back to the very beginning when you had Hagar and Sarah. Mm -hmm. And the conflict started right then. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think that tension started and as they began to uh, multiply, you know, that tension was always there because, you know, that and you know, and I think that Satan has a way of getting in things between the best uh, between the best brothers and sisters mm -hmm. and and corrupting it. And so I think that this is a case where that has happened in this situation too, where it started from the beginning and they never really resolved their conflicts over the years and it continues on till the day. Well, you know, the, the promise was to Abraham, I'll make you a great nation, I will bless you, I will make you famous. But there was also a promise to, um, to Ishmael and that was, I will make also of him a great nation, but he will be hated by all nations and he will be... I think in King James, like a wild ass on the earth. And so really two, two sons, one with the promise of God, another promise, but it was, it's, it's still the same thing. Two brothers, the promised child mm. but at it's, war. It, it's extended through the generations, it's, Pastor Lee. It's today. Well, I think, you know, often we focus on what has separated the two, mm -hmm. and appropriately so, mm -hmm. and they've been separated for thousands of years. I think what will bring them together, and I think the only way people come together is under the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, absolutely. And so I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Arachaha Kwadash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Also, a sincere shalom to the other followers of the truth. Um, shalom to you, few sisters, and mainly let me say shalom to the elect. Uh, I don't know where I ran across this video. It just popped up. So um, the first word I want to go into, because this what what it is with our people. Now, these people on the panelists who claim to be theologians and understanding the Bible, which they've never opened the Bible to read anything that they're saying. And the scripture says, prove all things, you know, always be ready to give an answer to a man that, that anyone who have a uh um, give an answer to every question to a man that has a reason of hope right who really wants to know what the truth is so I don't understand the woman you know maybe she, it was sincere to her or whatever but these uh, panelists they've never went into the scriptures right they just came off the top of their head from what they feel that they read now this is why um the scripture says, I believe Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The ignorance, this is why I have this word in here, the, the people are in ignorance. The word ignorance comes from ignore, you know. Ignorance means of lack of knowledge or understanding of education. But, you know, ignore comes out of the word ignorance with simply, in a nutshell, um, go just basically goes into not really wanting to have the, the true understanding of the knowledge, you know, being careless with the scriptures, right? Just don't want to know. In their own mind, they're ignoring 
the truth that we've put out there, right? Anyway, let's get into the lesson. Um, there's a couple of things to go into, but I'll try to make it quick. Um, going into uh, Isaac and uh, Ishmael and the covenants and so forth. We've seen the same thing go on to Jacob and Esau. We can go on down the lineage. Um, we can start with, let's go to Genesis 17, just to get to the point. Because the ultimate, the, the covenant of, of salvation, the contract, the covenant of salvation, goes to the Israelites, right? Period. They said, well, all you need, they need Jesus to intervene in the middle and bring the covenants to get looked if the most high wanted everybody to have the covenant then everybody would have the covenant of salvation right uh, anyway uh, Genesis 17 and 17 then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart because this goes to Sarah his wife and he was being he's older and he's like you know felt he wasn't going to have any children well, let's get to the point um 15, and Yahweh said unto Abraham, as for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name, the change of her name. And I will bless her and, and give thee a son also to her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations, right? Kings of people shall be of her, right? coming through the lineage of him. This is why he's speaking to Abraham. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is 90 years old bear? With a question mark. And Abraham said unto Yahweh, Abraham said unto God, oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed and thou shalt call his name Isaac All right so when you read the story uh, you had Abraham and Sarah and um, she couldn't conceive so um, Hagar the handmaiden or whatever bared the son had Ishmael <clears throat> Sarah wasn't really jealous I don't think about the fact that they had gotten together, but she felt that she wanted a son with um, um, Abraham, right? So the Most High put that spirit on her to willingly want to have children by seeing Hagar have this son through Abraham, right? Which he had sons, okay? It says, um, and God says, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son. Indeed, thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him, right? Isaac, right? And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. Well, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac and Sarah shall bear him thee, at this set time of ne in the next year. And he left off talking with him and God went up from Abraham. So we can also see when you go on down to the lineage, you had Abraham who had Isaac, who had Jacob. Now Isaac had Jacob and Esau. But again, we can see that Esau never got the blessings. He never got the covenant. It was still through Isaac, Isaac and Rebecca. So we can see the same thing portraying on down through the generation, right? So when you go to Matthew 22 and 32, it says, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Why did he say that? It says here, I'm the God of Abraham right and Isaac he didn't say Ishmael he didn't say anybody else he just said Isaac and the God of Jacob why didn't he say he was the God of Esau right where's Esau at in there 
I thought everybody can be united under one coalition. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Why is he saying this? He said, wait a minute. Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the living, but the rest is the dead. They didn't have the promise. They didn't have the covenant, whether you like it or not. It's what it is. And they said the question was hard. I don't understand how it was that hard. Well, it's not to us. He says, but the people come together through Jesus. Let's see what Jesus said. Matthew 25 and 32. 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he set upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall he be gathered all nations, and he shall, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth the sheep from the goats. Right? So you got this system now that's trying to put them all together, but the Lord said he's going to separate them, which really they were separated from their birth. The nations was already separated. He divided the nations to their inheritance, right, to their inheritance, and set the, the bounds according to the children of Israel, the numbers according to the ch children of Israel. So why does he say he's going to separate the nation? Then he said he should come in the throne of his glory. Right? Now, when you go, I believe, in Revelation 13, you go into the breakdowns, he says he shall have many crowns. Right? That's subduing the nations. Right? So this is telling you, um, Matthew 10 and 5 said, he's not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Acts 5 and 29 says he died. Who, who it goes on to say, who Yahweh who ye slew and hung on a tree, and gave repentance to the Israelites. Uh, when you go to Isaiah 13, there's so many scriptures where um, Paul said, they beckoned to the, his hand to the air and said, ye men of Israel, hear these words and give audience, right? So let's go to Acts. I'll try to make this quick. Acts, the third chapter. This is going into when um, Peter and John went to the temple and uh, healed the, 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 lame, the lame beggar, right? And they, would, they healed him, right? But let's go on to verse 11. It says, And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the, in the porch that is called Solomon's Greatly Wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered the people, Ye men of Israel. So that man that, was, that he healed was, had to be an Israelite as well. He said, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? He's talking to the men of Israel, right? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? So they was showing their humility and really just showing it just through, this, through the faith, through the spirit, it was the power of the Heavenly Father. That's why he, he told us even to this day, healed the sick, cleansed the leper. You know, we was all sick, you know, spiritually sick. It says the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, right? The God of our fathers have glorified his son, Jesus, Yahweh. Wait a minute. Where's everybody in this, man? You just say it over and over again. I'll read it again. It says, um, the God, this is Acts 3 and 13. The God of Abraham and of Isaac, not Ishmael, and of Jacob, not Esau. The God of our fathers have glorified his son, Yahweh, whom ye delivered up, right, and denied him in the presence of Pilate. So that's what I wanted to go back into the, the uh, comments uh, on this somebody named book tenders club says Muhammad right let me see it says Muhammad is accepted by his own people Arabs right Jesus is rejected by his own people Jews What's do, what does that tell you by the way I am an Indonesian Muslim and we are not looking for Messiah right we are judged by God by faith and deeds. See, that tells you 
What the hell are you doing on the comment board? Well, I guess they said Muslim. Not by crucified corpse, right? What happened to people who lived before Jesus? Didn't they deserve this late salvation? And this is the ignorance, and this is what I talk about, the ignorance of our people. There's a thing called reincarnation. You come back over and over again, and you come back, you know, you get judged, you know, like the lame beggar. So um, this person said um, that the Muslims was accepted by the Muhammad is accepted by his own people. When you do the history of Muhammad and the wicked stuff he did to force um, people to follow Islam, it's sick. I mean, that's, I'm not going to go into that, um, but it even goes up, uh, goes back to Roman Catholicism, right? Um, so Jesus rejected by his own people. Yahweh Shah rejected by his own people. Our own people uh, is uh, is wicked. Our own people went off. That's what the whole punishment's about. That's why the children of Israel is under a curse. But not everybody rejected uh, what, what you call Jesus, Yahweh Shah. There was some of us, two thirds of our people, some of us who who believed and some who didn't. What's up with that? You got Arabs don't even believe fully in Islam. They come over here and wear head wraps and tight pants. What did that tell you? They ain't following all the Holy Quran. And what about all those different doctrines in the um, book of uh, Muslims? I mean, uh, the book of uh, the Quran. The book of Kyle tells you that um, it was all about the Israelites. What is what's up with all those doctrines? And what happened to the prophecies in the Quran? Right? You're followers of St. Augustine, man. Anyway, let me go back here. Um, the God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob and the God of our fathers have glorified the son Yahweh. So, as I was saying before, that's why we need salvation. That's why we need salvation. Muhammad, what is the what is the salvation for, man? What do they need? What do they need to be saved from? And where's the prophecies that say they're going to be saved from their enemies? But ye denied the Holy One uh, and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life. Right? This is all going back to the, the children of Israel whom have raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses and his name through faith is the name have made this man strong who ye see and now and know yea the faith which is by him have given him the perfect soundness in the presence of you all right so that man being healed represents the beggar that being healed and walk represents us being healed and seeing the light and the building of the of the third temple you know us being raised from the dead right because we were spiritually dead right so anyway th these people don't know man they they off and um let me also say um looking at the title of the video it says are both jews and muslims blessed by god through abraham well Jew just one tribe, so I don't know who they consider and they are. And Deuteronomy twenty eight sixty four said that the Israelites are scattered from one end of the earth even to the other. So I just wanted to bring that out. So the title from itself shows that the people just are in ignorance. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.